This is Peter Walsh with m Scott Ritter with the Decorated Apparel Expo. This is Ben Landisman with Lawson Screen and Digital Products. This is Deborah Sexton. And you're listening to the Two Regular Guys Podcast. 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 It's hosted by Terry Combs and Aaron Montgomery. All right. Well, welcome into the show. It is Friday, May 27th, 2022. I'm Terry Combs. Uh, you can find me at terrycombs.com. And we're half right, hosted by Terry Combs and Aaron <laughs> Montgomery, but actually hosted today here by Terry Combs and Eric Campbell. <laughs> yeah. And uh, as you might have noticed, I'm Eric Campbell sitting in for Aaron Montgomery. You can find me at ericcampbell.com when I am not here scrambling to make things happen behind the scenes at the two regular guys. <laughs> uh, the reason why I say that is uh, today we are intending to have a wonderful guest. Uh, Eve Lowry from the Baby's Booty will hopefully be joining us to talk about education and, and the garment decorating industry, embroidery in particular. But so far, we've had some technical difficulties getting her in. If she gets in, when she gets in, we'll bring her in and have that discussion. Otherwise, you may have a little bit of a host show up until then. Luckily, we do have <laughs> some stuff to talk about. Uh, and between Terry and I, we may have like a little bit of experience in the industry, just a few years between the two of us. You think, Terry, just like a couple we, years? We, we've done a little bit of education out there, Eric. Just, and, just and, and on our subject today, which is <laughs> embroidery education, I think uh, you may be taking the floor. A little. A little <laughs> bit. So sure we did a lot of. Eve, can you hear us? <laughs> Eve, yeah. can you hear us? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we may be doing that again. We'll see. We were going to try and bring her on. If not, like I said, might be a little bit of a host show and we will just be uh, trying to roll. But hey, that is how it is to do these things live. I know we had an episode on Friday the 13th about what you do when things go wrong. And one of those is march on. <laughs> well, right. we're going to march on. <laughs> <laughs> for our next year show uh, uh, that falls on a Friday the 13th. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, we can revisit this at least once a year. <laughs> All right. So with that, let's go ahead and go for some news. I did want to bring in an, kind of an interesting news story. And first, I'm going to say uh, kudos to the people over at the Apparelist, Apparelist.com, for doing a great job bringing us all kinds of great news. And this is where this comes from. Uh, and this is actually a study st stating essentially that uh, U.S. apparel resale is going to double in the next five years. So kind of fueled by retailers, fueled by brands. So it's not just stuff that we're talking about, not just thrifting and all that. There's also a bunch of retailers and brands getting into the space. Uh, the U.S. secondhand market is projected to double in the next five years, reaching 82 billion by 2026, according to ThreadUp's 10th annual research uh, resale report. Uh, conducted in partnership with Global Data. And uh, while North America remains leader, resale is clearly now a global phenomenon. Uh, worldwide secondhand apparel market growing 127% to hit $218 billion by 2026. Uh, the article goes on to discuss like major brands that are starting resale programs. I know if you've seen like REI has been doing this lately. Uh, and there's other kind of customer involved stuff going on with people uh, moving more and more into this kind of resale space, which is interesting. So like I said, something that maybe it's not for all of us as decorators to talk about resale, to think that that's what we're dealing with. However, despite it being a little bit outside our real wheelhouse, I have seen lots of decorators talking more and more about the fact that throw away what we kind of kind of call brand fill, you know, <laughs> the stuff that's meant to be thrown away that's not going to be used multiple times has been kind of decreasing. There's been much more kind of purposeful buying among customers. So it's something interesting to look at. Uh, I know I've certainly talked about it in kind of the space of patches and decorating and systems. You can reuse garments, but also about just using higher quality garments because people are intending to get multiple uses out of stuff. So, Terry, what do you think about this kind of heading up? There? We have retail stars starting into this. Well, I, I you know, I, I, I can see that the uh, the um, disposable type of thing that it, it's a sustainable world. You know what I mean? And <laughs> I yeah. think that... Uh, Products intended for the landfill are, 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 are certainly have been and should be falling out of favor. So it's interesting, uh, interesting survey, though. Yeah, especially considering that we have more and more kind of retail stores getting into the space. I was surprised to see that the, the growth there. I mean, it was some 200 something percent growth in stores that are conventionally selling first run goods, having these resale programs as part of their mix. So like I said, it's not something that we're going to see right now. I don't think you're going to see just a, a load of people bringing in stuff for redecoration, but I've seen it before. And if you're an embroiderer, you put a patch over a design or another person's logo at least once in your life. Uh, this is no news to you. However, it may be news to find out that more people are looking for that as kind of a purposeful, like you said, an, an eco version of what they're doing for decoration that they may be trying to bring you stuff. If th those of us who have always said like, 
Nick's on customer supply, we may want to <laughs> review what that market <laughs> looks like in the next five years. <laughs> it, it, interesting enough. And uh, that, that patchwork uh, as a screen printer is not nearly as easy as, <laughs> you know, <laughs> overprinting something and, and you think, well, I can still read it. It's just... <laughs> Hey, the like words I said, are shiny. <laughs> this, this is uh, most this is most definitely an embroidery thing. More I often I think because most of us would never think about trying to reprint a screen print piece. What I think is interesting about it is that you might find people who are wanting a a shirt to last quite a bit longer, even when it's an event shirt. So I think it's like the the classic throwaway, cheap as you can get it. You know, single color print event shirt may not be what we're doing all the time going forward. We may be really selling on that higher margin stuff. So as often as I've as I'm accused of being a hoarder, yeah, I, I I'm certainly <laughs> all about <laughs> oh, quite reuse. A, any guy who has who doesn't have a shirt from their like whatever their band that they went to go see when they were 18, don't lie to me. <laughs> Everybody out there's got <laughs> some shirt that's hanging around that is way past its its, its usage you, time. It's just in you, a you mean my 2008 Orange Bowl shirt with <laughs> Kansas Jayhawks? Or... <laughs> did you wear it literally yesterday? Because because uh, I bet you you probably did. <laughs> uh, I didn't, but it's 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 a little uh, threadbare at the, okay. this point but i can't part with it because hey they may they may never go to another bowl game <laughs> certainly not the orange bowl <laughs> they won that game by the way actually actually my son printed it he had a he had a nice. t-jet 2 and uh and it was cool it's a photo of an orange with a little like sticker yeah. uh, that's that's yeah. that says sun kissed or whatever um, yeah, yeah it said kansas jayhawks and it had a jayhawk head on it and it was super cool he's he's uh for a history uh, major uh, <laughs> who does uh, software support, he is a pretty darn good graphic designer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder how he got into that world. But yeah, suffice to say, even <laughs> right. we are susceptible to that stuff. Like, I, everybody knows about my my time I spent studying in Iceland. Yeah, I still have the uh, embroidered patches from that. I still have all the all the gear I brought home from that stuff. All well, the class you stuff. With that, you know, <laughs> how would you? And it came from a magical place that's not here. I mean, when you're when you're a country right. kid, would you come from a smaller place? Uh, Iceland yeah. is real. <laughs> yeah, it really is, and not covered in ice. If you're wondering, so for all of my Icelandic friends who are I'm sure, I'm sure watching right now, <laughs> I, I I knew that story. We'll call <laughs> it Iceland sure. to keep people from coming here. <laughs> Greenland, on the other hand, covered in ice. Covered in ice. <laughs> yeah, this is true. This is true. All right. So with that slight deviation from apparel <laughs> de decorating, uh, suffice it to say, good to know that people are holding on to things for a while. And interesting to think about that kind of good, better, best sales scenario we're always trying to put ourselves into. Now there's another reason for uh, recommending best, folks, hanging on to something a little bit longer. All right. So we've got a couple people in. I want to say hi to some of our regulators who have shown up. Number one, we've got Don saying, happy Friday. Happy Friday, Don. Happy to have you in. Got Todd from Fat Dad Wholesale saying, good morning. Uh, Todd, Todd's said, there doing this. Todd's yeah, there yeah. for a podcast listener. I'm oh, yeah, rubbing yeah. my hands together saying, yeah, right. give us the dad joke. I've got a comment yeah. on that. I know. I've got we work to do after, right, Todd? <laughs> I know. We actually have a dad joke, which i got to put up on screen and everything. Because I'm, like I said, I, and if it's it your looks dad like... Joke. This is my dad joke for once. And also, like I said, we like we do in all podcasts when you're producing, uh, above the ground here, we look like we're going, but like a duck under the water, little feet are kicking. There's a lot of <laughs> stuff going on in the background that I'm trying to manage. So on, on, on your side, me, I just sit here and talk. Hey, Terry is <laughs> like I said, Terry's the talent and he has all of that screen printing knowledge that I do not have. So we, we just have to let Terry be there and be the face. That's the way we do this thing, right? <laughs> all right. So a couple of people who are in Christine Shree saying, Hi guys, stocking your show for potential guest as usual you may want to hang on for a minute <laughs> <laughs> you might be that hopefully, guest uh, christine. Yeah. christine hopefully we get no why i always say that <laughs> yeah christine hopefully we get eve in eve is pretty awesome has this great channel where she does great work she's gonna be part of start here academy we'll get into that if we can if nothing else i will run down and just say all of these things but hopefully we'll get her in to talk about the great work she does kind of in that uh home prosumer kind of category which we've talked about a lot on this show but, you know, we'll we'll make it work. And like we always say, and Ramona also agrees, uh, that'll work. <laughs> you guys always have a good <laughs> show. We will certainly try it. Like I said, this is not the first time this has happened. Uh, when you do live shows, then the technical difficulty bug will come get you. And every once in a while, the guess not being here bug <laughs> shows up. And that's something you can't plan for. 
All right, Mo says, good morning. Good morning, Mo. And Crystal always also saying good morning. Thank you guys for always being here and supporting us while we're doing our awesome show here. So it's always great to have you guys talk, jump in. We would love you to jump in live and talk about your education stories and everything you've got going on. And thank you very much for kind of being here and saying hi to us in this kind of frantic morning, getting things together. <laughs> All right. So with no further ado, since, you know, Everybody well, is here we, for this, right? Yeah. Well, when Aaron uh, uh, said that he was uh, he had a conflict today, and and Eric, would you be available? I said, and Eric, your dad joke is is up next. You're on deck, man. So this is a perfect day. <laughs> I know. I get to disappoint everyone today, which is great um, <laughs> because you guys always know that I'm behind the scenes shaking my head. Now I'm here to deliver the same amount of pain to you that I get every week. Right. And I, I mean, like I said, I'm a little bit of a traitor here. I'm going to give you the dad joke anyway. So. Uh, I have this wonderful dad joke I have to ask my friend Terry here. So, Terry, uh, did you know you can wear sunken ships as hats? I did not know you could wear a sunken ship as a hat. I mean, I'm a hat expert. Trust me, I know. Uh, <laughs> you are. It's easy because they are capsized. <laughs> you can always Come tell on. your jokes <laughs> because on. you always have the, in parentheses the explanation of what yeah, it means. I mean... <laughs> For, I, I do this, but the, the reason why I always put the explanations in these jokes, I, I actually think that it increases the pain to explain the joke because that ruins the joke twice. The joke is already <laughs> bad. We already know the joke is bad. Explaining the joke ruins it twice, and that just makes the sting that much better. So, hey, I like the joke. I'm into the joke. We'll see. We've got, of course, we have comments here. All right. <laughs> Still no. <laughs> Good morning from City King. Darn y'all have a guest talking about today. I'm out of town. Don't worry. <laughs> we may or may not have a guest talking about today, but we'll be talking about embroidery either way. Thank you, Cindy, for being in. All right. So, yes, thank you guys for showing up. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and kind of jump into the next section anyway. We'll do the role, and then we'll just start talking about Wait. education. Yeah, you know, and before we go any further, we want to thank everyone for checking out the Two Regular Guys podcast. We are always looking for new guests, even possibly today. And <laughs> if you or anyone you know would like to join us, go to calendly.com slash two, the number two, regular guys, and uh, share your show ideas. We we have some openings this summer, so we'd love to uh, get some, some new folks. Or if you've been on the show before, we'd love to have you back. If you are listening to the podcast version of the show, we would appreciate you sharing the Two Regular Guys podcast with all your industry friends so they can become regulators too. We would appreciate you giving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Amazon Podcasts. We are everywhere and uh, those reviews are very helpful for us. And if you are watching us live right now, please join in with your comments and questions and uh, your guest features. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, please feel free. Jump in. We could use the interaction today, but uh, I have to bring in. We do have some user interaction that is good here. Uh, Todd, of course, following up on the dad joke as he does, uh, comes up with two good comments that we have to share. Number one, uh, I think Eric felt the peer pressure to tell that joke. Yes, peer for our podcast like listeners. P I E R. <laughs> See, Terry ruined that one for you, Todd. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not, and he shouldn't be. That's the right way to do this. <laughs> and of course, which is even worse, I can't think of any more boat jokes. Canoe. Oh, Todd. For podcast listeners, C A N O E. <laughs> yeah, that that hurt my friend. So that's how it goes. <laughs> that's pretty good, actually. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. That hurt. And Christine says, "Eric, you know I'm a huge fan, and you're a great friend, but I may not forgive you for that joke or explaining it, <laughs> which did make it worse." See, I I absolutely have to say, explaining the joke makes it worse, and that's the point. <laughs> and, and when we plan these shows and we're doing the outlines, we always we're always teasing Eric about. Uh, <laughs> About the fact that he just can't help but, but explain it at the end. <laughs> and every time I'm like, that's not me not being able to help it. That is by design. That is not a bug. That's a feature. I want this to hurt. <laughs> this is the only point of the dad jokes for me. <laughs> uh, All right. With that, well, folks, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you a little ad we have from uh, our good friend Aaron Montgomery and his uh, business. And talking about OSG, as usual, our success group. So we'll go ahead and grab that real quick. And then we'll jump into uh, the rest of the talk for the show. So uh, let's grab that real quick. So I want to share with you three mental states most business owners struggle to master. It's goal setting so that you believe it's possible. 
It's facing fears to be able to step outside of your comfort zone and finally taking action even when you're not sure what action to take. Now, 90% of the challenges business owners have faced have nothing to do with the nuts and bolts of running a business. It's not the accounting, the production, or even the marketing. It is the mindset. Those challenges are nothing to overcome when you are a business owner with the proper mindset. At our success group, we get to support decorators who are overwhelmed for an investment of only $5. You can check it out for the first 30 days. Just head over to the website below to have more clarity and confidence in your business. All right, folks. So... <laughs> Eric, do you ever have be overcome with wanting to say when Aaron says OSG to yell out, yeah, you know me, that every time he says it. <laughs> Only when we don't get to go to the trade shows, since we might know as our, our good friends at GSG have a little chat chant that they do when they open up their trade show booths. And Terry Combs here cannot help but yell out when they chant GSG. They go, GSG. And and always carries going, back. Yeah, you know me. Yeah, you can tell you, you're in a trade show that Terry is there because he cannot help doing that. So I try not to, but hey, when we're <laughs> at least when we're at the trade shows, you have a vent for that. You have a way to let off that pressure. <laughs> you, you can Google "naughty by nature" if you uh, yes. want to. Uh, What's sad what is that, that is now means. a classic. Uh, <laughs> it's now on the on the oldies channel for the <laughs> for the rest of you guys. Hey, don't feel bad. I had that the other day when I realized that uh, they were playing "Black Hole Sun" by Soundgarden over these speakers at a store, and uh, a little part of my heart died that day. <laughs> um, but I guess it was heading for time some time. <laughs> so I saw somebody post recently. They're like, uh, uh, they were playing all these great songs, and then I realized I was listening to an oldies station. <laughs> It's happened to it's the like best. All my, all my favorite songs are now oldies. So, well, needless yep. to say, that's uh, that happens. That's, uh, that's my life. But so, <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, Eric, I, I, I have thought about something that I never got a chance to ask you. You know, what well, I do my all screen right. printing class. I do my screen printing classes. You know, and and just last week I was in Chicago um, <clears throat> for another Atlas Screen Supply sold yeah. out class. They sell out just about every class that they they offer there. Um, and, and people flying in from around the country to go to the class there. And I've thought, is there, and, and this is, it's, you know, it's two days. Uh, sure. I, I, you know, obviously some classroom time, but a lot of hands on, you know, everybody uh, degreases the screen, everybody coats the screen, everybody burns the screen. They, everybody helps, you know, tape up the job. Everybody helps set up a four color job and a five color job. And, and, and we do foil and all kinds of things. But I've, I've often wondered, is there something like that for embroidery? Is there some some place where people there can are. go and actually get their hands on a machine? There are lots of programs like that. And what I'm going to say is it looks like Eve may be coming in here shortly. So I'm going to try and bring her in in just a couple minutes. I'll answer your question and then we'll bring in Eve and, see and get her <laughs> on track. But yeah, there are some things like that. And actually what I, I'm going to mention is despite the fact that there are multiple programs, so I'm not going to, I won't hit everybody's programs. I know speaking of like, I know GSG has done some stuff. I know there's lots of programs to do that. Um, the machine manufacturers often do that. And one of the people who I saw doing it very recently, actually, Aaron was part of this uh, over at ZSK, not Cena, who's out in St. Louis, did one for ZSK. And they did a big educational couple days, had everybody in, did classes. I provided some materials. And our good oh, friend, okay. Andrea Bomarito, who's been on before, she was there. And so she was doing her, her level best, teaching people digitizing and machines and all that stuff. So yeah, there actually is stuff like that. A lot of that is through the machine manufacturers. So that's the, that's there too. But also on kind of the home prosumer side, tons of that. Tons of oh. people in the home side and the prosumer side doing that kind of work. And even when you do like, let's say, vendor uh, type things where we have these vendor show stand-ups at local so and back places like that, they tend to have those kind of setups as well. Um, so yeah, there are show there are shows that have that involved. There are classes that have that involved, not sometimes as many perhaps as you might think necessarily it's not quite the same i think screen has a little bit more of that um but you do see especially in content with kind of the machine manufacturers they will have training setups training sessions or in shop training for people who have uh, purchased machines too but yeah there are some live training events uh something i'll admit i never did i really <laughs> gonna hit the ground running <laughs> starting in commercial machines immediately but we have eve here i'm gonna see if i can bring her in and i know that's we're doing it live on stream but we're gonna see if i can bring eve in and if we can hear her and get her set up so let's try and bring in eve so i'm gonna see if she's in and uh get her if she can get her video back on we'll try her okay 
unfortunately <laughs> she dropped out again folks uh, her video stream is off so yeah we'll we'll try and bring her in again in a second um <laughs> so like i said her, her, uh, her training is much much better than her her podcasting so yeah, well <laughs> she, like said, she, she has a wonderful youtube channel where she does all of this stuff i was ready to bring that stuff in but yeah unfortunately uh her video has dropped out again so i guess well, we'll keep we'll keep chatting for a minute we'll see if we can get her back in or not well, well but, you know uh, eric uh, along those lines uh because in the screen printing there's a lot Lots of uh, lots of classes where it is, um, you know, specific to a, a brand of equipment or specific yeah, to a, yeah. a supplier. So it's so it's kind of a self-serving. Um, when I go in a new class, so like at like at Atlas mm -hmm. or Workhorse, they'll say, "No, Terry doesn't work for us. Terry's going to be here <laughs> as the educator and and yeah. um, and and not here." promoting us he's going to be i was sure, just wondering sure. if there's anything like that that's not tied into a to a manufacturer per se so you know what i haven't seen as much of that most of the time it seems like if we're if there's something that's an event like that a lot of that's going to be hosted by someone who's you know that yes there are people doing that but it's usually going to be hosted by someone who is you know at a, a place that has a showroom that has machines involved that's that are set up so it's like most of the time that's yeah. what's going to happen um However, what I'm going to say is digitizing is slightly different, and the classes that we have at the trade shows are certainly different. Because as as you know, Terry, we don't have the, I mean, I wouldn't say ability because I don't actually want to do it, um, where we, we are said to not have a branding or any sort of support for a particular software, particular equipment in our classes. They are open. And I know I personally teach in a way that's, uh, that is kind of theory first, so that we end up where we can do the classes without having to be on specific software most of the time. So it really depends on what kind of side you're dealing with. If you're on the embroidery side, um, honestly, a lot of what we do is fairly universal aside from the commands. The embroidery itself, I, and this is something I've, I've said a million times in, even in the digitizing world, um, understanding the mechanisms behind the embroidery, how to stabilize, how to hoop correctly, thread tensions, running speeds, all that stuff. So you know how the different combinations of materials come together is more important than necessarily the machine. Do machines make a difference? Absolutely, especially if they're in good repair. <laughs> That's the problem I had starting out early in a little shop that had dead machines. Uh, you know, sometimes I was literally digitizing things to make sure they would run on specific machines because they had literal just errors. They were not working correctly. Boards were not working right. The, you know, the X and Y axis were not even like as they should be. Um, but if if you're understanding all of the kind of underpinnings of embroidery, how the material works, what different settings do as far as uh, the digitizing and, you know, densities, things like that on particular materials, on particular combinations of stabilizer material and topping, the embroidery process is pretty similar across the board. Now, I don't know for, I assume screen printing is similar that way too, where it's like, yes, there are different things we set up on the, on the machines, but if you understand the technical process behind it, then right. what's important about being in front of a machine is more, you know, that that now it is kind of brand specific because you literally just want a tour of what the functions are in your particular machine and control unit. So, I mean, it, it depends on how you feel about that. But I think that it's it's good that we have both spaces, I think. But primarily, I, I'm more concerned by far that people understand how the needle and fabric and thread go together and what they do when they're under pressure, when they're under tension and running. Well, there, there are, yeah, there are those universal truths, I guess you would say, but yeah. e even there, you know, a beyond brand, uh, something that, you know, I obviously have an opinion on many, many things, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you don't say. I'll give you an example. Um, you know, when you screen print, you, you can either pull the squeegee or you can push the squeegee, you know, the, yeah. both, yeah. both ways. And, and in my classes, I try to give every option. In fact, on day one, everybody pulls the squeegee on day two, mm. everybody pushes the squeegee. Uh, there are folks out there. Uh, I had someone come up to me at a trade show and say, cause I was helping somebody set up a press in their booth and I was pulling the squeegee and they mm. came up and said, you, you don't teach that in your class do you teach what? <laughs> Pulling. You must always push the squeegee. That's the only way. And I'm like, what? The only way according to you? I don't, uh, because, you know, I, I, I've been screen printing for a little while. And when I started, everybody pulled the squeegee. And so I, I do that out of, uh, I do that because that's how I learned to do it. And, and, yeah. and I have many people in my class to say, well, I like this way better, but it, you know, um, 
everything isn't set in stone out there. <laughs> no, totally. So. I, I think that, and we see that all the time, especially when you have the large range of people going from, and especially in the breedery industry, you don't see, and this is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, you don't see a ton of people who necessarily in the screen print, at least I don't see as many who are what I would call true home screen printers. Like I don't see as much of it. I know there's the whole joke it, about the old you do machines and stuff. But yeah. like, I don't see as many people in that industry, whereas in, in the embroidery industry, there's a wide range of people who have different aims and goals who are everything from a bedroom in their house to a commercial building. And they may right. have the same equipment. You may have a commercial piece of equipment in that bedroom. You may have a home style or prosumer level machine in that commercial building. And so there's a wide range of practices that really kind of bleed across and it wasn't always the the way but it seems like it is now where people are starting to understand that that's a spectrum that's going on yeah oh we almost had her again man yep <laughs> we almost had her again <laughs> yeah eve almost came back on and then i couldn't i couldn't get her in and she dropped back and, and plus my phone's blowing up i don't know if you, uh, you <laughs> hear my watch going on it's like everybody wants to call you know why because it's friday before a long weekend and everybody's trying to get all their stuff done it's <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm getting out Very. of here at noon, so <laughs> as the producer, I gotta tell you, you gotta silence your phone, my man. <laughs> I, I literally <laughs> throw mine away from me at the end, of, right before we get started. It's silent and then away. It is not I have literally to figure not out how to silence my watch. That's my yeah, problem. Right. I... Uh, see, that's what we have to do. new <laughs> technologies, people. All right, so we've got a couple things to bring in. Aaron, of course, jumping in, listening from the hospital where he's got his dad right there. So, uh, BTW, check in for the VA hospital lobby. Long time listener, first time caller. Aaron's been waiting for that one for nine years <laughs> he's been waiting for that absolutely okay and uh ramona says uh, i agree with embroidery there's no machine there's machine education design education can be split into just stitching and digitizing yeah and honestly it is a continuum whenever we see educators and like i said eve sadly we haven't been able to bring her on she's a wonderful educator who really kind of uh she starts out in the home space mostly and like she'll teach on brother machines that's so these are home machines there used to be brother commercial machines there aren't any more there's many of us who shed a little tear who used to love those old brother commercials i had a single head i love that people still tease me about um but yeah brother used to make metal commercial machines they don't anymore but she has kind of the brother machine tutorials and she has her tutorials and uh, the software she's doing and it's like i said that's a it's a continuum where people are learning on all stages of this stuff. And so when we see people on YouTube who are doing that, I know there are some people in the commercial world who's like, oh, well, we get YouTubers doing stuff. They are teaching the same things that are essential to all of us. This continuum of, you know, digitizing and embroidery, no matter where you're at it, the ultimate end result is that we are putting that needle through that material. We are stabilizing that material and it is going to respond to the pressures of embroidery similarly all the way across the board there are certainly different capacities there but the this continuum really is uh connected it, there's gray area in the middle but it's not commercial people here and home people here and never the two shall meet honestly there's cross-pollination all the time so i think that's yeah it's it, as much as ramona does have a point in saying that it splits into stitching and digitizing i think that honestly you don't learn digitizing the best way that you can without stitching the best digitizers I've ever known are people who run machines, who get on machines and actually run it and see the materials moving. And the best embroiderers I've known know enough about digitizing to communicate with the digitizer about what's going on in the file. Well, you know, and, and along those lines, and, and I'll, I'll go back to a screen printing reference. Yeah, please. <clears throat> I would always have, uh, the and, and you know, I, I'm from a time also where you had multiple artists working for you when, you know, as yeah, a large yeah. screen printer. I would always have the artists spend a day working in the screen room. I'd always have them spend a day out uh, where they're setting up the presses and, and yeah. pulling or pushing the squeegees. And because the, you know, creating the art, creating the films is one thing, seeing what happens out there and, and what may might be a difficulty for the folks in the screen room that, that they're doing mm -hmm. in the art department without ever realizing that, that it's causing an issue or so, um, I, I think part of that education is uh, is seeing the process from start to finish, basically what you're saying as well. Now, do you guys have a certain kind of, is there a crafter screen printer that you have that you deal with? Or is there stuff that comes in when you're doing these uh, classes where you've got someone who started in a way that maybe is lower tech and you have to bring them up to speed with more tech? Is that something that happens? Yeah, to a certain extent. I'll have people, mm -hmm. uh, the, there's two. Uh, one is I used to screen print in high school. Okay. <laughs> the other one is the other one is I have a tabletop 
one or two color machine mm -hmm. and and i never impressed you know that you can buy for a couple hundred dollars yeah uh, and 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 i always tell them i say you know the 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 bread and butter of screen printing is one and two and three color work that's 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 where we make our money that's where most mm -hmm. of us live um but in my classes you know they come because they want to they want to do more they want to learn more it's like uh, I, I had a buddy that used to work at Workhorse uh, many years ago. This is just spam. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who said, I love the you do. And, yeah. and, and I'm yeah. like, why is that? And he said, because for every 100 people that do you do, one of them goes, oh, I want to do this for real. I want to learn how to do this. So um, so those people come to the classes as well. But um, yeah, the, for the most part, uh, the folks that come to my classes, I'm going to say half of them don't even have equipment yet. Okay. Um, they they come because hey, I want to do this, but I don't know anything about it. And uh, and uh, I, I think most of them, by the time they're ready to go, they're they're putting a package together and buying it and saying, hey, I can do this. I printed this shirt and I printed this shirt and I, you know, and I and I printed puff ink and I did some really cool things. And um, obviously, many of them go out there and become very successful. You know, um, Tom Brown. Um, yeah. from Envision in, in Iowa, uh, we were interviewing him uh, at the first ThreadX, which was, what, three years ago, Eric, I think? Uh, and, I think so, yeah. And uh, and I said, uh, I said, Tom, how did you get started in business? And, and Tom's a very, very successful screen printer, embroiderer, uh, entrepreneur. And he goes, well, I, I came to your class eight years ago. <laughs> So unfortunately, I don't remember everybody that comes to class, but I like, but if you tell me your story, I can usually go, oh, I do remember this. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's the thing. It's, we don't know where people are going to come from when they're doing this stuff. You never know when people are going to uh, you know, kind of approach this and how they're going to move from where they're at into kind of this commercial space. Thing is, right. there's also, you don't have to. That's the thing. You don't have to go into that space for it to be that way. You don't have to have a brick and mortar to end up in a place where you're, I mean, if you are selling decoration, you are professionally decorating. That is what that is. So that's, I mean, we can talk about the, definitely there's a spectrum there that people have different thoughts about it, but it is potentially, you know, something that to learn, to understand that there's not only a continuum, but that people come from different sources and, you know, may have different kind of opinions coming in, but then they learn to do things in an efficient way that works for them. And for those of you who don't know what a you do is, I just have to say for you guys know, it's like a little unit that I believe it exposes screens at itself and it's a tiny little like single station, um, single station or, kind or, of- Or what's the other one? Speedball? Is that speedball. the other one? Yeah, that, Speedball. Yeah, and, at, at and there's Michael's. some people who are like making screens and laying them directly on the shirt and you know, screen printed a big, heavy, heavy print. Um, pretty frequently and i think the funny thing is we get very you know tied up on the technicality of the thing but there's if people want that stuff then you know it that's something that you can make a product that people are buying it's hard for me to say that that's no way to do it plus people are going to then come in from that love of doing the version that they were doing and learn something else and come into our space and it's really a good idea um to well, think about and, and that as a potential. You 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 get a taste for it. I, I'm yeah. thinking about the movie The Runaways, and in in the movie, Joan Jett has stencils and she's spray painting onto shirts, <laughs> and you know, you're like, this is cool. I want to I want to do more. And those a lot of the are those people that come to to my classes where they want to do this for real. Yeah. So we're going to give us this another try, Eric. Yeah, I think we're going to give this another try. Eve's been on. It looks like her video is still stable. So I think we're going to go ahead and. See if she pops on. If not, we may just have to keep on chatting as we are. But, you know, uh, the host shows well, are good. Neither of us are ever at a loss for words. So, <laughs> Actually, and I'm going to say her video is frozen. She's frozen still. So, yeah, unfortunately. Yep. A movie I've never seen. I'm the only there. person who's never seen that movie, by the way. <laughs> right <laughs> so in any case sorry folks yeah eve once again has dropped out of the studio so we'll just keep on chatting about you know education about people coming into the industry um because one of the things we were going to talk about with eve is how you know people kind of slide in sideways that's why i say you kind of slide in sideways on fire to this industry sometimes you don't necessarily intend to go here i know uh 
Terry, you have to favor us with the way that you describe your degree because I love it very much. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, uh, armed with my degree in journalism from Ohio University, I accidentally became a screen printer. And and, and that's that's where Fantastic. that's where we all came from. <laughs> Nobody grew us, up yeah. saying, you know, my goal in life is to be a garment decorator. <laughs> yeah, it's but, rare. I mean, it's very rare. I've, I've certainly had people in my classes who come with that. And I'm I, every time somebody comes to me and says, I knew I wanted to do this. I'm like, really? <laughs> Let me sit down and talk to never you. Never crossed my mind. <laughs> yeah, this was never a thought for me. This was never a thing I intended to do. Not that I don't love it, and not that I'm not happy. Once you, once you're in, like I said, you're always in. Yeah, but well, you know, yeah. you know, uh, Eric. Though uh, the thing that I add for people in my classes, my seminars is is once you get in, you never leave. And and it's not, yeah. you know, it's, it's Hotel California, but, uh, <laughs> but the thing is, <laughs> in a positive, positive way. way. But, uh, but it's because there's so many businesses that you can be in yeah. that, that, that aren't exciting. I mean, I'll just say that, uh, you know, I, I don't know, maybe people who sell life insurance are excited about every day selling life insurance, but, but with this, it's, you know, uh, in, in my classes, there's a, an Eagle print we do. It's a five color print on a black yeah. t-shirt and it's yeah. an Eagle with flames coming out of the wings. And, <laughs> and, and I, you know, I've been using that graphic for like 15, 16 years, but, and the, and, and, but every time I, I print it and, and do that highlight white and lift the screen, I look at it and go, ah, oh, that's cool. <laughs> and how many how many jobs True. can you have out there in the world where you finish something and go, that's really cool. That's awesome. Oh, no, I, I, very similar feeling. Last week, I was messing around with some textures. It was uh, trying to teach people how to make some kind of faux, rough, destroyed, distressed textures in digitizing. And I'm just playing with the software. I jump into the software. I throw some vector lettering down. And I started playing with some stipple stitching and some custom motifs. And I throw this thing on the machine going, I think it looks pretty good. Densities look right. I know it should run, but this is really non-traditional kind of stitching. Spun it off, throw it in the spun polyester thread at it. So I had a little bit of fuzz. And I pulled this thing off of the little machine that I'm running. I'm just like, that's pretty cool. I need to make a shirt. I need to make a thing for myself. <laughs> like, <laughs> and usually, do I ever? No. Do I ever make myself something? No. But do I ever pull that thing off the machine, still watching it stitch? And when that is pretty cool. Yes, absolutely. Every time. And it's surprising how many times that we'll have that experience. And that's like, what, 20 plus years down the line. And uh, yeah. We don't need to mention how many years <laughs> for Terry down the line it is since his first screen print because I'm nicer than that. But my uh, new but, line yeah. is uh, I started uh, I started uh, screen printing in a previous century. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of leave it laying right there. <laughs> Let everybody write their own jokes. You don't have to <laughs> to do the work for them. But yeah, that is uh, that is often the case where it's like we we do these things and it's still very cool. And I think that's the the thing that I love is to encourage people no matter where they're coming from that that's the feeling we want to have and honestly part of that experimentation and that feeling of making something real and making that piece of art come come to life and being able to help people uh you know people express themselves is such a cool thing about this business and we should recognize that no matter where people come from i mean once again we can all day long talk about how there's you know bad information for certain kind of people or whatever or whatever you know we can talk about that and get grumpy but if somebody has a love for a garment decoration my favorite thing is just to open up the conversation and see where it goes. I think that's just how it has to be. So, yeah, uh, we'll have to see. <laughs> like I said, sometimes these things don't work for all of us the same way. Everybody has different opinions how they go. I know we had a comment earlier, and I don't even know if I want to open this back up. Uh, Christine says, why do people care if the squeegee is pulled or pushed? <laughs> and and that's I think it's similar to a lot of things we deal with in embroidery, too. It's like people have these really hard beliefs about certain things because they've been taught a certain way and yeah. it's just not that cut and dry it's well, just and, not that and, clear and and part of it too is beyond that it's like uh it, for screen printing i'm sure it's true for all decoration methods there are people in the industry that want this to be rocket science because i've dedicated my life to it and yeah. and and uh, i want I, I want it to be uh, complicated and and only I can do it. And and here's what I say in response to that: It's just a t-shirt. Nobody dies. Everybody relax. <laughs> All we're doing is printing t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's the case. That we, we have to remember that that's one of those things. Uh, now, Aaron says, "Is it a Mac or PC thing?" Uh, 
kind of. <laughs> I mean, that's. I, I mean, that's. I feel like that's how it is. But you have to tell me, Terry, what do you think? Is it really just a preference it, thing? It, there was a time where it was huge. The Mac and PC thing. I mean, they 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 would want to come to blows. You know, well, it, it's probably going to be one of these slap fights. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the the not so much anymore with the with the Mac and PC thing. It's not. But but oh, yeah, there was oh, yeah, a time but, where. Uh, where graphic designers would say, well, oh, if you're a well, real think, graphic designer, you, you use a Mac. That, well, that's that the thing. thing. I think he's saying, the, is that the squeegee thing the same? Is push or pull the same kind of thing? Where it's oh, like right, yeah. Both the the, the end result's time. exactly the same. I okay. mean, it's exactly <laughs> the same. For those of us you, who you, are un you unaware. Yeah, you can't look at that shirt and go, oh, obviously, push. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, people come from different different kind of backgrounds, and they have different things that work for them. In fact, I'm going to bring this in just briefly. Uh, Kristen says, came in through a martial arts school, started with embroidering custom black belts. That is a very interesting way to get into the embroidery world. That is and let me tell you, the things you do for a thick piece of webbing or black belts or any any sort of work that you do on something thick and heavy like that is not what you would do for a T-shirt. If you got excellent at doing black belts and never touched a light design on a T-shirt – you would have a different methodology, or at least you might tell somebody, if you told somebody to do the same thing on the black belt as you would on a, on a t-shirt, you would be in a bad way. Like you could do these things differently. And if you come in doing heavier work, that's like patches. I had this this discussion and very much like we weren't talking about Mac and PC. There were, there were actually differences where I had a customer who came in. He wanted me to help him learn how to do patches. And the first thing that he did was like, I'm doing these patches and I show them and I've got these fairly pliable patches. I haven't applied any heat seal. I haven't applied like crinoline or any sort of backing material to make these things differ. My patches are very light because we were going to stitch them on. They were being used for uh, wardrobing. They're being used for costumes for TV and movies. And they want them to look like they'd been worn a little bit. So they didn't want a super, super, Super stiff patch look brand new it needs to look like the person who had it has had it on for 10 years you know has used this multiple times and the guy came in to me and he's like oh, okay that's cool i like the way you do that but uh i use mine with like three layers of all this material and he puts all this heat seal and all these different things on the back of it he's like oh my guys are all death metal guys that's what i do all my patches for they like their patches stiff like cardboard and they're not happy until like they they are absolutely stiff and hard there's two different ways of going about it. My customer would have never let me get away with a patch that was that stiff. His customer would have never loved the patch that I was making for the wardrobing community where they were literally wanting the patch to look like it had been laundered a whole bunch. They wanted it to yeah. lay pretty pretty loosely on a garment, or at least the ones that I was making at the time. And we had this discussion where either of us are wrong about our, our materials or techniques. Absolutely not. He had a customer that wants that patch to feel like cardboard. That is just not a common way that people want the patches to feel. But at the same time, hey, that's what the way he his customer wanted it. And going about it in his way versus mine, there really wasn't a, a huge material difference. It was all about the result and who you're selling to. You have to know your audience to know what's going on with that. I am just sitting here wondering if Kristen um, might have embroidered my black belt. Nah, I, just... <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for a revelation we we're gonna get some deep terry combs lore about his, his, your time in the his studying in the mountains <laughs> becoming I, a master. I did i did my one year of karate when i was uh young <laughs> yeah i had i had about four but yes very very light very light knowledge of that and i'm way out of shape there's no way my, my hands are not registered there. weapons so <laughs> no no only if you count my, my like wit. From my wit is the registered, is a registered weapon. <laughs> his cutting wit and his frequent use of dad joke. And, and that, this is lovely. Uh, Kristen says, oh, we did some really heavy embroidery on t-shirts because I didn't know any better. And here's the go. thing. I, same kind of thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing to say that you've done some of that stuff. And honestly, there are people who want different qualities of embroidery on different garments. And honestly, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Um, one of the other things I talk about with digitizing Go to retail stores and look at the different kinds of embroidery that are out there. I call it retail research. Our good friend Jay Basella calls it R&D, rip off and duplicate. Um, but <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I like to call it retail research. If you go look at things that are made for like home decor, they use sometimes half of the density we use for coverage. They put just the barest amount of stitches on things sometimes. And other times, especially in home decor where it's never going to get washed, somebody's not wearing it, it doesn't have to be flexible. On some high-end stuff or stuff that where they want to have a lot of coverage, they'll have it so dense that you couldn't bend it. I've seen throw pillows that have densities where literally you could you could jam a scissor straight into it. It wouldn't go through. I mean, we talk about bulletproof. This thing is officially body armor. But they <laughs> use these really different textures than what we would use in our part of the world in apparel decoration. Logo decoration, fashion decoration, uh, you know, and home decor 
all being done on the same machines, roughly the same materials, definitely with the same software setups. And it's just the, the theory behind it. If you understand what you want to get, you can use these tools different ways to make it happen. And it's just very similar that uh, when we talk about the kind of split between home and commercial, I see a lot of people saying, oh, home people spend too much time on things. I'm like, if you can get the price for the time you spend, who cares? If you're pricing your stuff correctly and you do something that's crazy multimedia and has a bunch of processes yeah. on it, if someone's paying you for that and you're profitable, I don't care. Because we make jokes about all the time, the art project, where you take on the thing that you think is super cool and then you realize how much money your shop has sunk into these pieces and you're like, wow, we are not making money anymore. <laughs> the amount of time and effort or the number of, of impressions that go into making a single piece. I know yeah. we've all taken a job on like that, but honestly, um, most of the time, as long as we're being profitable and we have a, a client for that, that's fine. You should see some of the prices I've seen people get, like let's say uh, the wedding industry, the amount that you'll pay for one single custom embroidered veil you can spend some time on that and make profit. Trust me. It, it just really depends on your audience and what's going yeah. into it. Those methods can change and still end up with what I would consider to be, you know, a, a decent commercial output. And especially as long as you're technically sound, you know, things look the way they look there. The, you don't have threads poking out. You don't have loops and junk and it's not literally poorly made. You can have different levels of all of these things that some people will say set in stone. It's why every time I teach digitizing and somebody somebody asks me for a number, they're like, what number for pull compensation? I'm like, number one, going to change. Ready to write it down. Give, yeah. me the, give me the the magic. <laughs> I, I always love that. They're like, density. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, <laughs> here's where I give you an answer that's not an answer. Here's where standard density usually is for 48 thread but I'm lighter than most people. It's just the way I tend to play. I like less, a little less coverage for a little more flexibility in the hand. And someone else is going to have a higher density because they want more coverage and they're not as concerned about flexibility or drape of the material. It really depends. And it's the saddest thing when we're educating people to have to give them that answer. I'm like, so what I usually do is here's a number, start here, then Wait, move up or down this much because, <laughs> because of all these things. For myself, I came here to get all the, I was going to write it in my junior yellow legal pad here and oh, yeah. I was going to frame it and put it on the wall. And this is what we do. Here's how we do it. But uh, I, I have a question for our listeners, but Aaron yes. made a comment was karate even invented back then when I was that's, in school. That's rough. And that's yes, rough. Uh, Aaron, everybody was Kung Fu fighting then. <laughs> oh my God. I, I walked right into that. I didn't even know it was coming. I listened to you like you're going to say something serious for a minute there. <laughs> No, here's here's my serious question for the listeners. Yeah, yes. how, how judgy are you guys when you go out in public mm -hmm. and look at any type of whatever decoration you do? How judgy are you? And <laughs> and I know the answer. Very. <laughs> <laughs> you can't help it, right? It's, yeah, uh, it's it, hard. I'll, it's hard. But here's the thing I'll, I'll say about that, too, is like, <laughs> frankly, when I look at other things, the half of it is me going, oh, man, I can't believe these big companies can't get their decoration right. The other half of me goes, wow, why am I so stressed out when here is a piece that's in, you know, a regular like department store that costs so much per piece and their decoration is not entirely on point. They've got trims that aren't handled correctly in their, in their designs. And I'm sweating over a little bit of variation here or there in my stitch quality. And I'm like, yeah, well, the people who are there with big brands aren't sweating on that because they're trading on brand. Well, here, here's me in, in a retail store yeah. with derisively going, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> it, it could be worse. Let me tell you, the problem I have is uh, being an embroiderer, I turn everything inside out. <laughs> and I, look at the, oh, yeah. I look at the stabilizer. I look at that in the back. Now, also, the other reason I'm doing that is sometimes people don't know is there are different processes for doing big retail stuff that we don't do. Because sometimes they'll do things like launder garments post decoration, which we really don't do. We don't generally do laundry. They may have stabilizers and stuff that they can do with water soluble things that we don't always have access to unless we can convince a client. I've done this before. Uh, I tried to make it a thing where we had this really cool topping that was a big, thick water soluble topping. It left the stitches kind of loose and puffed up. But without foam underneath them so you could do it on light garments but it required that we launder the garments after they were decorated which as you guys know it means the finish is going to look different it's not going to be all that that kind of finished surface quality and i only ever had like a couple of clients that would go in on me with that concept it was cool but it was really suited toward fashion decoration so yeah we check the backs but the thing is sometimes you check that stuff and go I'm never going to be able to convince a client <laughs> to let me do the thing that this big company did to make this stuff work. 
but yeah, I always check the back. The only thing that's bad about this is, uh, I, I have confessed this many times is, uh, it's hard for my wife to go shopping with me because I will forget what class of clothing I'm looking at. So yes. Um, if you didn't know Victoria's secret uses lots of embroidery <laughs> and I will look at all the stitches on that. And I'm sure that I look really special just pouring over stitches and looking very you know, intently at all the decorations that are there at different stuff. Or I, I have the other problem with, I will, I will look at someone's jacket too long. <laughs> I will start looking at someone else's decoration that's on their person and forget that it is on a person and that they might think that I'm staring at something that they're wearing too much. You know, you know, <laughs> just the other day I'm, I'm doing one of these kind of lean over things. And yeah. Kim, Kim's like, what are you staring at? I'm like, I'm trying to read that guy's shirt. <laughs> As for the usual, and I, I like that Kristen is, thank you for being with me on this. Yep, we always look at the backside. And Lauren <laughs> says, yep, how judgy are we? Very, very yeah, judgy. Exactly. <laughs> Aaron said, I just spit out my coffee on that kung fu oh, fighting thing. <laughs> he did, yeah. So glad to ruin Aaron's laptop, number one. Number two, Aaron had another good comment. Yeah, it gets really weird how much I handle a garment in the store. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, same yes. with me. You got to check the hand of that, of that print and... <laughs> At least that's the bad thing, though. I've known people, I had screen printers in my life before where they would pick up the shirt and stretch it. Oh. See how, how how well that ink is holding up to stretch. Did they use the right additives and is it cured well? Yeah, yeah. that's not cool, guys. Don't don't split everybody's prints in the store. <laughs> that's not cool. You know what's going to happen. Then, then you put the hanger in the back. Yeah. <laughs> put it in the back. We all know. Okay, I, here's once again, deep lore for decorators. We all know where the good shirts go in the box and where the not as good shirts go in the box, <laughs> right. don't we? It's not it's all three, the way in the back. Right. Three up it's from the three a.m. and you're uh, and you're printing <laughs> shirts. Yeah, we know what's in the middle there. <laughs> you know what's in the middle of that stack. Don't tell me you don't know. <laughs> we try and do better, but every once in a while, there's one of those medical stack shirts. It's, <laughs> it's, sa it's saleable. It's, it's yeah. in there. Yeah, it's in there. So it's just fine. don't put it on top. <laughs> just don't put it on top. You got to have that opening the box experience that we all know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think I let new print much smell. Better. Yeah, that brand new print. We got it. <laughs> it's like it's like taking the, the the plastic off the off the the front of your iPhone. You know. <laughs> yeah, that, it's just the, the opening of one... the box is the perfect print. Right. You yeah. It's it's a, the, you you don't get to experience that more than once. It's just <laughs> <laughs> until you get the clients who know about the middle stack shirt. That's not cool. Uh... You guys, that's that's hard to do to somebody when you're in the showroom and they start filing through the stack to make sure. Like that's why you have to make sure your quality is good all the time. All right. I, exactly. I, I'm not advocating for the middle of the stack shirt. I'm just saying it happens sometimes. <laughs> All right. Well, well, hey, we're 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 coming up on uh, five minutes left in the show, and uh, yeah. good show, Eric. It was uh, right. I'm sorry, so sorry that our guest wasn't able to get in. She, yeah, for she for all of our so listeners, she, she kept trying. She would pop uh, on, freeze, pop off, so, pop on, yeah. freeze, pop off. So feel Eve, very we'd bad. love we, to have you back another time. Uh, we're terribly sorry that that happened. Thank you for trying so hard. Uh, what I am going to go ahead and do, even though we are going to have her on another time, I'm just going to let you guys know. Go ahead and check out what she's got going on over at the baby's booty this is her youtube channel that i've got this bitly link name. to and i'll post that yeah, the baby's booty it's awesome by the way like a pirate's booty so it, if we're not talking about dad jokes now um this is definitely mom joke quality she's got it going on that's a great fun so it, yeah she's got a little pirate duck on the front of her page which is awesome yeah go check out what she's going on there in fact i'm gonna go ahead and I'll, i will go ahead and share the screen so you can see uh see what we're talking about this is her channel up here and i'll bring this up real quickly there she is. Uh, there's the bit.ly link and you can go ahead and check out what she's doing over there at the baby's booty. So cool stuff from Eve. She's got education. She's talking about uh, software, embroidery, machine tutorials, everything. There's some stitch alongs, some really great content and lots of videos. So if you guys haven't had a chance to check her out, please go check her out. And like I said, we will definitely try and have her back on another time. If we can. And, and Eve is going to be a part of the start here yes. Academy that Aaron's going to be emceeing. It's going to be in Charlotte, September 15th, the day before the show comes uh before the show opens and yep. she's going to be one of the uh, one of the speakers there and we had a speaker last week as well and uh, so that's going to be a, a pretty big deal event down there in charlotte so if you're in the southeast and and uh, want to uh, get some awesome education uh, make sure you check that out at the uh, gra uh, graphicsproexpo.com i believe yeah, we get graphics pro, graphics hyphen pro hyphen expo dot com slash start hyphen here hyphen academy. However, 
luckily, I realized that after the fact, uh, our wonderful friend, Aaron Montgomery, who will be emceeing this event, so he will be guiding you through the Start Here Academy, has given us a link at OSG. So osg.link slash SHA for the podcast listeners. You'll get to the Start Here Academy and get to see all the wonderful stuff going on. Once again, that big continuum of people coming into the industry, starting from the hobbyist side and moving into the commercial space. Let's bring these people in, welcome them in, and help them with the kind of processes and potentials that we can get them to be part of our community. And honestly, you want people to be good stewards of the community, bring them into the community, teach them, help them. That's how we get that to happen. So for everybody, for every complaint I get about the hobbyists don't know what they're doing, I'm like, what are you doing to help them learn? That's what, that's the comment I want to put out there for you. What are you doing to help them learn and how are you going to make them feel like they can, can become part of this community? Say so yeah, gatekeeping, not allowed. <laughs> Go to the start. We, of we, Academy. we, we certainly all done. started somewhere. And for yep. me, it was my how to print t-shirts for fun and profit yep. written by Scott and Pat Fresner and, and started <laughs> reading through going, I think I could do this. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and here we are. And, 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 and uh, years down the road, I was uh, teaching classes for Scott yep. at the U S green printing Institute. So, Oh yeah. That's, uh, yeah. That's uh, yeah. That, my transgression or my uh, transition <laughs> through the transgression transition <laughs> through the industry. <laughs> the transgressions happen the, much the, later. The, the, my transition <laughs> the, through the industry, but there were many transgressions <laughs> during that transition. <laughs> you can't let the two guys who write take over the show. <laughs> <laughs> just, we'll just start making jokes about it. It'll just be vocabulary day for everybody else. But yes, no, I I had a similar road of transitions and transgressions. Um, <laughs> suffice it to say, yeah, same thing here. I, I remember very distinctly started learning literally in a back room by myself from the manual. And I remember the first time that I got a hold of an industry magazine and how jazzed I was, how excited I was to see these stuff. And the first time I was talking to these people, later on, I became you know, somebody who was writing in the same magazines they were. And but I remember that being starstruck that first time when you're like, yeah. oh, it's these people who I've read these magazines from who helped me in the middle of the stuff. And what what you find out later is that they are like you. They started somewhere. They want to help you. Yeah. They're excited that you're excited. They want you to be a part of it. And definitely the stuff that's going on at Start Here Academy is going to be like that. These are people who have done the work but who definitely want you to do it too. They want you to be a part of it. And I think that's yeah. what's awesome. So once again, Aaron's very excited. So he says, make sure to come start here Academy and then get to the Charlotte show. I'm so excited. We are excited for you, man. And then Aaron, of course, says the transgression was hanging out with me. <laughs> so, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to say yes, <laughs> <laughs> but it led to all these years of two regular guys. How can that be a transgression? That is the best it, thing ever. You've definitely got it, the redemption story then. <laughs> it, 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 it all started at the green iguana in Tampa, right, Aaron? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad it's it, it sounds like a good story start place to be like that's where you oh, want to be for the origin story the green iguana beautiful <laughs> can't get much all right. better than that folks all right so well, what I would um, like to say we don't have a five things but I want to encourage you this week we didn't have five things ready we kind of had some different plans as you might see but if you have time to check it out go to two regular guys.com. That's the number two regular guys.com slash five things. And that's also the number five. Uh, and if you have a chance to check that out, you can submit your five things. If you want to do a five things readout, you can either read it yourself, submit a video, send us just the text of the five things, record it on the website right then and there. And you can send that to us and we can put your five things on there. So if you have five things you want to share that are great for the industry, don't even have to be completely related to printing or embroidery or anything directly. You've got five things you want to share. Get over to two guys.com slash five things and share your five things. Exactly. <clears throat> so some upcoming, I'm going to start with yes. my upcoming Go events. Uh, my complete screen printing business class at Workhorse Products here in Phoenix will be June 11th and 12th. We do have some spots available. Um, my next class in Chicago, I was just there last week at uh, Atlas uh, Screen Supply, will be August 27th and 28th. And I have a free DTG seminar at the Graphics Pro Expo in Indianapolis. That's going to be 11 o'clock on June 2nd. It's free, but you do have to register. And all my upcoming events, um, you can find at my website, terrycombs.com. And then Aaron is looking for some more prizes for sublimation for Skills USA national competition in Atlanta. Uh, that is going to be June 22nd and 23rd at the Georgia World Congress Center. And uh, so um, we have a, I have a link up on the screen, but you can also reach out to Aaron. He is looking for more prizes so that uh, to encourage uh, students. And, uh, you know, 
uh, Aaron, you may recall, uh, Aaron, Eric, we, you may recall <laughs> that uh, at, uh, Thre at ThreadX, yeah, we met yeah. a screen printer who had come through the Skills USA, USA as a screen printer. And so that was that was pretty cool. We actually interviewed oh, yeah. him him for um, two regular guys. Uh, as we already mentioned, September 15th is the Start Here Academy. And uh, Aaron says he's honored to be the MC and to get and to highlight three amazing makers and influencers. So make sure you check that out, Graphics Pro Expo. Uh, and, and we have the short link up on the screen. How about you, Eric? What do you have coming up? Well, today I have episode 113 of The Take Up. So today uh, we're actually going to be talking about digitizing tools for embroidery on screen and off. And so I'm going to reignite the fight between mouse versus tablet digitizers. We all know that this is, you want to talk about push and pull? This is one of those kind of push and pull <laughs> squeegee kind of things where people talk about what's better, mouse versus tablet. I'm going to break that down and talk about why I like to use what I like to use and why that works for me. Uh, we're certainly going to talk about some different workspace setups because I've had some discussion about that as well how do you set up your workspace as well as your tools but i'm also going to talk about some on-screen tools and non-standard ways that it helps me digitize i have a way of working with uh guidelines and shapes that are not being used for embroidery that i'm going to talk about it's something that i talk about in my classes and people ask me to do a little bit of a deeper dive so i'm going to discuss the ways in which i use on-screen tools in non-standard ways to make my digitizing easier. So that's gonna be going on later on today, 2.30 Mountain Time. And that's over at ericcampbell.com. You click on the tab that says the take up at the top, you'll be able to get the latest video will be right there for you and a link to the entire channel, all the playlists that are there. Also, later on this year, we're coming up closer and closer. <laughs> Every month we get a little closer to uh, Fort Worth Impressions Expo, which at which I will be doing the Making Small Run Patches. Uh, longer workshop. So this is the multi-hour workshop, the three plus hours of how to make patches and how to make it work and the markets that they work for. So join me there. You'll find that at impressionsexpo.com as per the usual. And that is going to be in Fort Worth, Texas coming up. So yeah, that's what I have going on. And uh, honestly, would really love to have you guys join me for any of that. So with that, that's it. I think we have come to the close of another show. We are just about on time today, <laughs> despite the fact that we didn't have a guest. There's a lot of faffing about, but for those of you who stuck through it, thank you very much for being here uh, as we tried to have Eve join us. But uh, luckily, you were here to have our little discussion and talk, and I'm happy that you guys were there anyway. So thank you for being here, and hopefully we can get Eve again in at another time when we get chance. Uh, absolutely. I think I, I think uh, I had a lot of fun, so hopefully yeah. our listeners did as well. <laughs> and thanks, Eric, for... Uh, for filling in today, also being the show producer, pushing all the right buttons in the background. Best I can, best I can. Uh, next okay. week, uh, Terry and Aaron will both be coming to you from the GPX show in Indianapolis. So uh, Terry will give us a little show update at the front end, and then Aaron and I will be coming to you with the rest of the show. So we might have another kind of host show going on, but hopefully we'll get an update from GPX. I'm glad to hear that we've got some representation there, but very excited to hear what's going on from you coming up next week. Absolutely. Until then, I'm Terry Combs. He's Eric Campbell sitting in for Aaron Montgomery. And we are for today, the two regular guys. Here we go. We're out. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for listening to Two Regular Guys. Check out our website at tworegularguys.com. That's the number two, regularguys.com. You can also interact with us over at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash two regular guys, or send us a tweet, twitter.com slash two regular guys. And we have a YouTube page. You can find all that from our website, two regular guys.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to spending some time with you again next week.